overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. We're so glad you're joining us on Hope today because we are all talking about God's stories and we're super excited what story you're going to hear today. I'm here with Matt and Anna and Matt, we are so excited yeah. to learn more about you and your journey. Yeah, you know, usually I'm not good about just talking about myself, yeah. <laughs> but what's so cool is just really when you're forced to reflect on the things and where you've been and who God has ordained in your life and the opportunities or even challenges that he's really helped to navigate through, it really blows you away to realize like, wow, only God could have got me to this point, you know? So I'm really excited to just kind of share about different opportunities and people that were along my journey that helped to get me to where I am today. Yeah, it's such a cool privilege to be able to share our stories because it is our God story. Yeah, yeah. So the way that we have been able to operate in this lifetime is really all praise and we're lifting Jesus higher. Right. And so we're just so glad that you're with us on this Friday. We were like all celebrating right before we went on air that TGIF it is Friday. So we hope that you're having a good day wherever you are. And remember that next week too is the entire week is the rest of the host God stories. So I'll be sharing on Tuesday, but right. all of our other team will be all throughout the week. So thank you for being a part and just listening to how God has worked through our lives. Yeah, it's like such an honor and privilege when we're able to share our stories because I, we feel like, you know, some of you, we don't see you every day, but you know, you are so part of our lives. And so it's a, a blessing that we're able to open up, we're able to share. And we hope that as we're speaking about the, some of the hurdles that we walked through, some of the things we've had to navigate, how we've had to hold on to God really encourages you. You know, something I was just thinking as Matt and Anna, we were talking is just like the fact that like God is a master author. Like, does he sit up in heaven and he's just like writing down these stories, having yeah, yeah. so much fun of like how creative he is. And so just being able to listen to the different host stories, like I know Amy shared yesterday and heard Tom and I was able to share last week. It's just, it's amazing. Like God is, he's very creative with these stories. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And you know, we're in the, the middle of our 21 days of prayer too. So you want to make sure that you stay with us all the way to the end of the program, because we're going to be praying for more of the the fruit of the spirit in our lives. Like we should be very fruity people when we are in Christ. And it's uh, always makes for a fun conversation to talk about like patience and self-control and <laughs> things like that. Patience so. being a big one that we all need, uh -huh. yes. right? Yes. <laughs> especially, especially nowadays. I'm just thinking our, my two oldest are in school and now that they're learning all kinds of different things, you know, picking up all types of new slang and, and lingos and whatnot. I'm just like, I need a lot of patience, God, yes. to be able to deal with these questions that are coming my way for my kids. That's so right. it's yeah. definitely crazy. God though. is with you. So Matt, yeah. without further ado, tell yeah. us about your journey and what God has carried and walked you through. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll start with some of the basics first, just to show people where I am today in case for those of you that know me or don't know me or only know so much about me. First off, uh, I'm married, been married for 12 years now. They'll show a picture. I have three amazing kids. Levi is my oldest, who is going to be eight. Estelle is going to be seven. And Micah, I don't want to say he's the troublemaker. Let's just say he's a lot, very alive and active is our youngest. So uh, they're in second and first grade and preschool. They're amazing. I'm so blessed to have a wonderful family. And I'm in the ministry full time. Uh, I do marketing, graphic design, and I'm a worship pastor. But to get me to this point has been quite the journey. And, you know, really reflecting on, you know, my life and what God has done, it really leaves me in this like awe and wonder of how God is so intentional, kind of like you were saying, it's like he's writing this script, but he's so intentional, you know, with the details and with the people he put places in our lives, the different challenges that he helps to navigate us through. And so I really want to share on just some strategic people that have been through my life that have really seen something in me that I never saw in myself. And if I would have walked away from it or ignored them, I probably wouldn't have made choices that led me to where I am today, right? So, okay, 37 long years ago, I was born in Virginia. And um, I'll show a, a picture here of my, my parents. There they are. My mom's from Korea. My dad's from right here in Pittsburgh. There's my older brother, Alan, and my younger sister wasn't born quite yet. So, all right, 37 long years ago, born in Virginia. Uh, my mom 
always had us go to church. But like many of us, just because we're in the church doesn't necessarily mean we're walking with God, you know. So we moved from Virginia around when I was about eight years old or nine years old, and we come to Pittsburgh. Now, when we come to Pittsburgh, it was a major culture shock for me. And the reason why is a couple of things. First off, I went from a wealthy neighborhood, a private school, uniform and all, to the city schools in a not so good area in Pittsburgh. So complete, like just shock from dynamics there. In fourth grade, all within the first month of my first year, this girl comes walking up to me in the hallway, hands me a note, this letter. I'm like, wow, this cute girl's give me a letter first day or like first week of school. I'm like, this is going good. I open the letter and says, hi, I'm your cousin, Cassandra. And I'm like, cousin? And she's like, I'm related to your, your other brother. I'm like, hold up. I don't have any other brother. What are you talking about? I've got my brother, Alan, I grew up with and my younger sister, Ashley. Come to find out, I've got another <laughs> brother from my dad's side. All, so all within like the first year of moving, a culture shock after culture shock and shock, you know? So sounds crazy, but it was just one of those moments to where I think my parents had to wait for the right timing to kind of ex explain that. They didn't know it was gonna happen that way, right? So all of the first year, th that kind of happens. Um, we go to a Korean Assembly of God Church, completely different culture period. Kore the Korean culture is just very different. So with that, it was just a smaller church, a uh, very traditional type of church. And because it was smaller, the pastor knows everybody by name. So in this church, it was really kind of uh, thinking back on it, a defining moment when God really started to reveal a couple things for me. I didn't know it at the time, but thinking back on it, it was. So because it was a smaller church and he knew everybody, he would do this thing during his messages. Sometimes he would call anybody out by random out in the congregation to stand up and read the scripture for his message. Like would make me sweat. I'd be sitting on the edge of my seat and just be like, please do not call on me. <laughs> Until one day he did read the scripture. At the end of the service, I go walking out and we had a guest pastor there that day. She pulls me aside just out of the blue and she goes, hey, I, I was listening to you quote that scripture. She's like, you have the voice of a pastor and you're going to be a pastor one day. Doesn't know me. I'm like, gosh, I'm like 10 years old. I kind of look at her. I'm like, yeah, okay, lady, <laughs> whatever you're saying. I've got dreams to be like a, a, a superstar here. What do you mean I'm going to be a pastor? Ain't no way. So I kind of just brush that off. Walk along. That was like one, one moment, like the first moment somebody had ever really spoken something into me, you know, and regardless of being ministry related or not. A couple years later, the drummer of the worship team pulls me aside after service and says, hey, you're going to start to learn drums. For no reason. I don't play an instrument, never showed interest in it. And I'm like, out of all the kids here, why in the world is she picking me to play drums, you know? And so she starts teaching me a few months later goes by, I'm on the worship team at the church. I point those out because it's amazing how there was two people already in that church that saw something in me that I never noticed about myself, you know? And if it weren't for that, well, then the next few years, I'm like, okay, well, I feel like playing guitar, so I learned how to play guitar. I'm like, then I'm like, I feel like singing, so then I learned how to sing. And so if it weren't for that drummer kind of seeing maybe that gift or that calling or whatever she might have saw in me, I never would have had a desire to pursue after some of these talents that God has instilled in me to use to this day, you know? So a couple more years goes by. Um, we end up leaving that church and going to another church. And when we started attending this new church, I'm in 11th grade. And you know how it is being a teenager. Like you gotta leave all your friends. Now you're making new friends as a teenager. It's just an awkward season. And so I finally, throughout my, my junior year, I make some new friends at this, this new church. My senior year comes around and then there's this thing called fine arts. And so I don't know if you guys have ever heard of fine arts or anything like that, but if you haven't, it's a big like kind of talent competition within the Assemblies of God throughout the whole United States. And so since it's my senior year, I've never heard about it, just caught wind of it. I'm like, okay, cool, I'll, I'll give it a shot, sounds fun. So I sign up for 10 different like categories, like large and small ensemble, acting, uh, songwriting, worship, and rap group. Was, was one of them for sure. So, anyway, so I, jo I joined these. Um, we go through the first set of competitions and then not think anything of it. It go ends up going to states. And I'm like, okay, cool. We get to states, go through that competition. It goes, moves on to the nationals. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, I was just doing this for fun. But all 10 of the categories I signed up for are going to nationals, which are held down in Austin, Texas that summer. 
So we get down to nationals, and again, I have no, there's just no, really no goal with like doing this competition besides just signing up for it. We get down there and only one of them makes it to like the top three. Guess which one it was? Rap, rap group, it rap was rap group. group. Yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go, rap group. <laughs> Didn't think anything, okay, so, which was cool. So after that ended, I was like, you know, you get your rewards and certificates. I'm like, wow, that was a really cool experience. Well, senior year's wrapping up and probably like many people watching at home, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. You know, so all my friends already had their plans. They're all like going to college. Even my girlfriend at the time is going away to college. And I'm like, okay, God, like, I'm literally, I remember sitting there asking, like, what am I supposed to do? Like my senior year is going to end here and I have no plans on what I'm supposed to do. No, no idea, no desire, no nothing yet. And then, lo and behold, it's, again, this is amazing how God uses something for our good. Little did I know, because my, all my categories in fine arts made it to nationals, it earned me like thousands of dollars in grants towards a Christian college. I had no idea. It just randomly came up, and I get this letter, and I'm like, oh my gosh. Well, God, this, you just helped me with something and used it for an opportunity to now go into a Christian college, you know? So I go to, I go to college, go to school. After college, I leave still not knowing what to do. <laughs> I'm like, what am I going to do here? So the only thing I do is I go back to some of my roots that I had a desire to do is like, I really want to be in a band. So me and my friends start this band, which I'll show you a picture here. Oh yeah. It's not called NSYNC, <laughs> but I pull this up because our band got to be one of the opening acts for NSYNC when they came in town. And so somebody cool. like made this, that was just like a funny like teaser of the past. There. <laughs> so, so, I'm, so I'm in this band for about four years and I'm thinking like, wow, this is gonna be like, God instilled all these talents in me to one day be in this band that's gonna tour. Until one day that comes down to a crashing halt and then just like nothing afterwards. So just like anything, when something kind of ends, you're, you're left wondering, okay, like, God, like, literally, what is next here? Like, what am I supposed to do? And what's so cool is, as I'm uh, looking for this job, uh, I'm searching, I'm asking God, I'm like, okay, God, I need a career, but I, I got very little experience in anything. I'm working out at the gym one day. A guy out of nowhere comes walking up to me. I've met him maybe, like, two times, barely had any conversation with him. He goes, hey, by chance, are you looking for a job? And I'm like... God, <laughs> like, what? Like looking at this guy, like, are you serious? He's like, you know, I'm in need of a marketing director for my company, and for some reason, you just seem like you'd be a fit. I've got no marketing experience, no, no you know what I mean? Like nothing, like I don't know, qualifies me to be in this position at all. So I'm kind of looking at it. I'm like, sure, <laughs> like yeah, why not? I get this job, and and it was amazing because I learned so many different things within the next eight years of working for this business. I mean, literally this guy, yet another person that I meet that God ordains, sees something in me that I didn't see myself. You know what I mean? And gives me this position that I feel like I'm not qualified for, ends up making me over this department for the next eight years in his company. And I'm just like blown away the fact that this happens. So, okay, so, so eight years goes by with that business and it, the grace is kind of lifting off of me at that point. I'm like, okay, I feel like something, you know, there's got to be something more outside of this because I, I felt like I was always somewhat called to ministry, you know. Um, so a after, after that job ends, uh, right before that actually is when my wife and I started to attend a church. And it was like perfect timing because there's like a transition happening to where they needed like a worship lead. So I'm starting to fill in and help out with worship. But yet there was still like nothing unfolding from it, you know, whether it be a career path or anything like that in worship. And then all of a sudden I start getting this desire to want to start a coffee shop <laughs> out, of, out of the blue for no reason. So I start looking into it. And that's, so my wife and I start praying for three different things strategically about one, it being like a coffee shop, two, me running the business, and three, it looking like something certain for salary. So I pull up to church one day for a staff meeting and my pastor looks at me and says, hey, I want to meet with you right after staff real quick. So I'm like, okay, I like, have no idea what that's supposed to be about. Right after staff meetings, he pulls me into his office. He goes, hey, I have no idea why. He's like, but the Holy Spirit, he's like, as soon as you walked into the building, put this idea on my heart for you. And, I, and I, he's like, shut it down if it sounds crazy or stupid, just tell me no. And just so you guys know, I never once told him these three things I was praying for, ever had a conversation with him about this coffee shop, 
me running the business and it looking like X amount salary. So I sit down, he's like, okay, so we're gonna be opening up a coffee and donut shop next door. And he's like, and I feel like you would be the perfect fit for it. He's like, you'll run the business. He's like, it's gonna be a coffee and donut shop and it'll be X amount salary. I mean, I literally sat there and my jaw dropped. He goes, take a couple days and pray on it. He's like, can you let me know? And I'm like, pastor, you don't understand. I've never once talked to you about these three things that I'm praying for. And yet you just answered all three of them. So I have to say yes in this moment. So again, he saw something in me from walking in that moment that morning. He just saw something in me right away that opened up a door to lead to opening up this business, you know, running this business. So that a couple years goes by from there. And again, this all sounds random because, right, because because I'm a worship pastor now and it's just like I'm in banking and electrical and school and this and the other. It doesn't seem like it makes any sense to where it is today. So obviously I'm, I'm like always wondering, like, why did I have all these different jobs and opportunities? And if it weren't for them, it wouldn't have developed me to getting to where I am today, to be the worship pastor I am today. So I'm, I'm running this coffee shop for about two and a half years. My pastor pulls me He goes, listen, he's like, the church is growing. He's like, we really need a full-time worship pastor. And never once asked him about it. He just goes, would you want to do it? Or do you still want to keep running the donut coffee shop? I'm just like, pastor, whatever you need me to do, obviously inside, I want to be the worship pastor, you know? And then lo and behold, a door of opportunity opens up for me to be a worship pastor full time. And I share all these different things because it is so amazing how God strategically ordains relationships, opportunities, and situations in our lives that we could either ignore and run from, or we can run to them, you know? And I, I'm like sitting here, like, what if I would have said no? to a lot of these different opportunities. Like what could have happened? What would have unfolded if I would have said no or ran from a lady speaking into my life saying one day you're gonna be a pastor or this drummer that pulls me aside and says, hey, you're gonna start drumming. What if I literally would have ignored them? I feel like I would have missed a lot of what God had in store for me, especially up until today, you know? So it blows my mind and I hope that encourages some people just knowing that God will do certain things in your life and not every opportunity obviously is a God opportunity, but when you're open to the fact of realizing that, wow, okay, this might not be my dream job yet. This might not be my desired opportunity. It could just be a stepping stone to set you up for God to get you where you need to be. And thinking back on it, God did that so many times in my life and it amazes me still to this day. That was phenomenal. <laughs> Thank you so much wow. for like sharing that. And like when yeah. you were talking the whole time, it's just like, God, I just think it's like he is Elroy. He is the God that sees me. And he used people to say, I see my son, Matt, and you're going to speak life to get you to the next place. That is truly incredible. Like God opened every single door. Yeah, yes. every one of them. Yeah, And, and it's, it seriously sounds crazy, right? And this doesn't have to be for anybody that's just in, in yeah. the ministry full time, right? Well, ministry can be a lot of different things, whether you're a teacher, lawyer, whatever it might be right. uh, in the banking. The, the point being is that God will literally open up avenues for you to get you there. It's up to us to realize, okay, I need to say yes to this. Because if I don't, I may never get to where God is calling me to be. Yeah. You know? I think that's what stood out to me. The, uh, uh, it highlighted like how you just kept saying yes. Yeah. And did you ever like battle fear and like, oh my gosh, I, I can't believe I said yes. Or was yeah. it all pretty easy and natural? Okay, so this is what's wild. When it's God, it seems like it's easy. It doesn't mean you don't go through your rough patches, but it, when it's God, he literally, it's honestly, he, it's like he just laid these in my lap. Yeah. It sounds so crazy to think about. And that's why early when I was saying this, it could only be God. Like, how is a guy gonna walk up to me in the gym out of nowhere and say, are you looking for a job by chance? And not just any job, like, a job that you don't have any expertise in and now you're gonna be over this part of my company? Only God, awesome. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah. God is awesome. Yeah, and is. Matt, thank you so much for sharing your yeah, story absolutely. today. It's yeah. powerful. And we are going to take a quick break. But remember, we're in the 21 days of prayer. We've got a scripture about the fruit of the Spirit. We're going to pray for more of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. So make sure you come back after this. Every now and then, life gets the best of us, and we need a reminder to keep calm and trust God. 
Simple but striking, the Keep Calm and Trust God box of blessings provides messages of reassurance to help carry you through tough and challenging times. These small cards fit into the palm of your hand and will turn your focus to the one who is in control of everything. Inside, you'll find 51 colorful double-sided cards featuring a combination of inspirational scripture verses and faith-based quotes. Add it to a get well basket or use it to encourage a teacher, family member, or friend. Or save it for the times you need encouragement. Be sure to ask for the Keep Calm and Trust God box of blessings when you give today. It's our way of saying thanks as you encourage others by providing life-changing Christian television through Cornerstone TV. Call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. Welcome back to Hope Today. We are in the middle of our 21 days of prayer. And remember that as you are going through these 21 days, if you have an experience with God, if he is speaking into your heart as you pray, as you seek him, as you sit in his presence, we want to hear how God is moving in your life as you come and sit and be with him. He's such a faithful God to be working in the details of our lives. And so today we're talking about the fruit of the spirit. And as believers, we have the Holy Spirit working in us to develop this beautiful fruit that is the characteristics of God himself. And that the more that they grow and develop in us, then they just like, like as if we have these limbs, it just goes off and we can shake this beautiful fruit onto the people around us. And the scripture comes from Galatians 5, 22 and 23. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance or patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. And you guys, each fruit, you know, I think about love and joy and peace and how our, our nation, our world is so void of these things. And yet how much in need our world is of those things and how God wants to use us to be able to, to share that and to have it overflow. Now, Anna, as you were just talking about, you know, our world, you know, what's not said in here, it's like a fruit of the spirit, money, success, mm -hmm influence, you name it, whatever the world is saying, that these are the things that are like these accolades that we have. This is what matters is like the things that in our spirit of what we exude and what we show. And I just think of that scripture in John where God says like, abide in me and I'll abide in you, that he is the vine and we are the branches. You can't get this fruit. You can't buy this fruit. You can't, I mean, it's not about, it's, you can go in church all you want, but it's really about having a relationship with God where you're just in his presence, when you're seeking his face, when you're reading his word, when you have to walk out these things and so just want to encourage you today I think a lot of times in our world we think it's like if I have all these likes or if I have this that's that shows the fruit of my worth but that's not what in the kingdom that <laughs> clearly it's not the measuring rod and the measuring stick in the kingdom of God it is these things and so I think it's important Matt that we have that in the forefront of our mind of yeah. really it is plugging into him connecting to the source and allowing him to move in us right. that's why the bible says not by power or by might but by the spirit it says the lord i was just praying with uh this couple a couple months ago and she had um uh, like some i forget what it was she had an issue where she had to uh it was like a brain or um sorry like a clot like mm -hmm. a blood clot and she had to immediately go in for brain surgery so out of nowhere, it comes out of nowhere. Obviously it's scary and it's kind of tragic. And so um, her boyfriend calls me up, I go and I pray for them. And as I'm just kind of sitting down talking with them the, the entire time, she looks at me at one point, she goes, you're just so happy. And I, I just think, you know, even in the midst of like a situation that's chaotic and scary. And I just said to her, I just said, well, you know, that's just because that's just the spirit of God, you know, and because I lean not and rely not on my own abilities or my own capabilities, you know, but I trust fully in God and out of it is the fruit of the spirit, you know, joy, peace, happiness, gentleness, self-control, which is a big one I think we all need, you know, but the point being is when you're full 
of God, when you're full of the Spirit of God, when talking about prayer, when you have a, an, an every day and a life of prayer and you're continually conversing with God, well, what's naturally going to happen is you take on the characteristics of God. And so no, no matter what situation you walk into or encounter, you're filled with peace despite your circumstance. You're filled with joy regardless of how large or difficult the trial might be. You're full of self-control no matter how much your flesh comes in and desires that money or that thing, you know? So it's important to understand if we wanna be able to navigate through this life, through all the ups and downs, good, bad, and in-betweens, man, we really gotta understand it can't be in our own flesh, but it's by the spirit of God, you know, which in return has fruit that is everlasting in our lives. Yeah, it absolutely is. You know, the, such good timing for talking about the fruit of the spirit. Like, I know some of you at home are just dealing with some really hard stuff where your peace is being threatened or um, somebody is just being so unjust towards you and, and you have this righteous anger within you. And yet we need that fruit of the spirit of self-control to know how to respond in those situations because it is not glorifying to God when we lose our, our temper and we act out and, and it is through and only through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can have that self-control and that when we lay our things down, like we so want to carry them, right? We so want to like have full control and that gives us so much anxiety. But if we remember to just lay it at the heart of God, at the feet of God, that he will take it. And in place of all that, he will give us his peace. He will give us that joy because he is steady even when our world is shaking around us. So today, pray for the Holy Spirit to infuse you with that fruit. Anna, just as you were speaking, I just heard God saying, I'm pruning your tree. You know, the way that fruit grows is like, you can put all the water and the sun on it, but the way that, you know, you grow the plants is like, you gotta sometimes cut off things. And so maybe in this season, the hardships and the things that you're dealing with, it's just God saying, I am pruning your tree daughter. I am pruning your tree son because he is trying to grow more fruit off of you. I know it's hard. I know sometimes you just wanna give up and you're like, I am so tired of this, but do not grow weary in doing good because in due season, you shall reap and it is harvest time. And so we are so glad that you joined us on this show of hope today. We pray that this inspired you, that it encouraged you to draw near to the heart of the Father because he is drawing near to you. We love you so much. Have a wonderful weekend.